Hi, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. I thought today I would do my um, top six books of 2019 and go over again my reading goals for 2020 and do a quick what I'm reading in January for sure. So to jump right in, these are not in any kind of order. I know I just joined booktube here um, six weeks ago, seven weeks ago. So most of my reading this year has been done without me covering anything at all. Um, and I, yeah, yeah, it's been a strange year. So my Goodreads goal for 2019 was to read 175 books. I very sadly did not make that goal. I was short by about 19 books, um, 20 books, excuse me. I read 155, 19 not a math person, I don't know. Um, but I read 155, which I know was nothing to sneeze at. Um, but it's much less than I have read the last few years. The most I've read in a year is about 230 books. Um, I'd like to get closer to that again if I could. Breaking 200 was a fun challenge most years and I could make it, but this year I dropped it a little bit more and I just couldn't do it. I didn't read for about four months this year. My, um, cat, my baby Chico. He was 16 and he was really sick the last couple of months. He was alive and then once he passed away in the middle of August, I was pretty much inconsolable for about a month solid. And I still talk to him every day. I still cry. I really miss him a lot. He was my little soulmate buddy. And um, his sister, his littermate sister, Sweet Pea, passed away two years before that. She had a spinal growth problem. So it was unsurprising, but she was almost 14 when I had to put her down. So putting Chico down at 16 was really rough. And um, that that was the four months I didn't really read. I couldn't concentrate on anything but him. And I'm glad that I did that. And I spent that time with him and I gave him that attention and did everything I could, IVs and everything to help him. Um, so changing the subject before I start to cry. Um, so yeah, I didn't really read for about a third of the year, and that's okay. Um, hopefully this year coming, I won't have anything like that again. All of my family has passed away in the last five years, uh, except for my mom, and she's gonna live forever, we have a deal. Even if she has to go to Shady Pines, that's fine. She's gonna be fine. Um, anyways, so I'm hoping that this year will be a much calmer year. There won't be any kind of health crises with people or friends or pets or anybody in my life and I can just kind of get back to figuring out what a new normal will be and not mm, so sad and gut-wrenching and stressful all the time. Anyways, didn't plan on doing that right now, but whatever. That was my year this year. Um, so I only read 155 books. Um, of course, I, I don't have copies of one of these books, I'm waiting for a coupon to come in the mail or a gift card. I still have some friends I haven't seen for Christmas yet, so and they usually give me gift cards, so I'll use that for that. And I have some replacement stand-in copies for other things. But um, yeah, this year I read still a lot of easy books. It's been, like I said, five years of nonstop death and caregiving and stress in my life. Um, it really has been constant. So I have been reading mostly easy reads, some romance, which I have enjoyed more than I thought I would. There's also a lot of genres I really don't like that I'm finding out, which is fine. So I'm reading some romance. I read a lot of cozy mysteries. I've read mysteries quite a bit the last maybe 10 years or so, um, but I've tended to go towards more of the cozy mystery side because um, I read a lot when I am sleeping or trying to sleep. I have a lot of insomnia, so it's a lot of easy stuff. And overall this year, I have enjoyed everything I have read for the most part. I think there were one or two that I hated. Quite a few were just okay, which I rate as uh, two stars on Goodreads. Um, and a lot, most everything was three and four stars. So the stuff here was a couple of five stars and some four and a half stars. Um, and next year... Yeah, I'll get there in a second. Anyways, so without further ado, um, so number one, again, not in any kind of order, but of my top six for 2019, number one was Good Talk by Mira Jacob. 
I'm surprised I liked this as much as I did. I knew I would enjoy it, but I really loved um, both her drawing style using a photograph and then having an illustration of her or her husband or whoever over the top of it and having big conversations. The book opens up with her son, um, who is part Indian, part, um, part American, asking about Michael Jackson and how he turned white and talking about his skin color. And it goes into talk about race and talking about 9-11, which, I mean, I remember where I was when I heard about it. I, I mean, I live in the Midwest, so we weren't affected, but I remember so much of that day. There's so much clarity about that day and the day after and the rest of that week. It was scary and strange and so quiet. Um, but there was, yeah, reading that again was a little hard. I got a little teary a couple of times because she was in New York City, obviously, um, for that. It's set mostly in New York City where they live. Um, talking about her in-laws voting for Trump and what that was like for her and what that was like for her son, um, asking a lot of questions and um, talking about being single with her girlfriends. And it was just, it was really, really fascinating. And I really can't wait to read it again, honestly. Um, a really great book and I recommend it for everybody. So that was Good Talk by Mira Jacob. Um, number two, um, let's see here is Notes from a Small Island by Bill Bryson. Bill Bryson is one of my favorite authors. He's always good for a chuckle and always something interesting to be read. Funnily enough, I own two copies of this book, a hardcover and a paperback, a newer edition, and I cannot find either of them. I think my mom has the hardcover and she's reading, but I should have my paperback copy here in the house. I have checked all over. I don't know where the heck it is. So whatever. Um, Notes from a Small Island is about Bill traveling around England um, kind of a farewell tour before he moves to back to the United States with his British wife and his two kids. Um, he talks about when he first got there in the late 70s and what that was like. And he revisits some of the places he stayed, um, places he toured around in the 70s and early 80s before he met his wife and married and settled down. So it's dated for sure. And he's not always uh, politically correct like we would be maybe today. Um, but it's still funny and insightful and it he made me laugh a lot. So um, Bill Bryson is usually always at the top of my list somewhere. So Notes from a Small Island was really, really funny. Um, number three is The Burning if Issue of the Day by T.E. Kinsey. Now, I, my mom has that copy at her house. So I just have the first one here. This is A Quiet Life in the Country. Um, this is the first book in this series set in Edwardian England in 1901, eight, 1908 about Lady Hardcastle. Um, she is widowed and she and her maid Flo move into this country house that's vacant. I believe it's a friend of her brother's that owns it and is renting it out. So they're staying there and they have um, two ladies come in and help, that help cook for half a day's help cook and clean. And Lady Hardcastle um, goes into the orangery and she draws. She eventually gets into film making little movies and things. And she and Flo have a great relationship. They are really good friends and they meet people in the neighborhood. There's um, the next, I guess, sort of manor house, country house over. Um, those two are such characters. And in this book specifically, they help the two of them figure something out and they go into the town and the, get to know all the little townspeople. And it's just quirky and wonderful and fun. If you like cozy mysteries, if you like British mysteries, this is a great series, really recommend it. This fifth book that I read this year, The Burning Issue of the Day, that involves um, Flo and Lady Hardcastle helping investigate bombings that are being done, like of buildings, and they're um, set up to make it look like suffragettes are bombing these buildings, but really it's not suffragettes. So they um, get involved in this really deep mystery and uh, newspapers are involved, the railway is involved. It's it's just so good. It, he does about one a year. This is a, a male author, T.E. Kinsey. They're just really fun, really great Edwardian little mysteries, so I highly recommend them. Next up is The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan. Um, this was really what cemented her to me as one of my favorite, like, easy go-to writers. She's not rewriting history here. It's fairly predictable. 
but I like her writing. It's really easy to read. Um, I like that they're almost always set in Scotland, if not England, but this is set in Scotland. I just, I just like them very much. And I really enjoyed reading this book. This is about a girl, I think in her late twenties or early thirties, who's losing her job. And she takes a break, um, in a very tiny town in like nowhere, Scotland. And she ends up finding and buying this dilapidated old library bookmobile and um, getting it up and running. And then she has a love interest in town and a love interest that like is out, meets her on the train tracks. There's a lot of train stuff in my life lately that, that's really interesting. But um, yeah, it was really, really nice, easygoing, predictable, funny, kind of, you know, romantic comedy book, but really enjoyable. Um, next up is House Magic by Erica Feldman. This is about, well, performing magic in your house. And it's not like totally crazy magic. It's um, making it more comfortable, how to make herbal bundles of tea, and you have recipes for that. Um, talking about the protective power of salt, how you can use sound to clear. Um, so it's not just sage, but you can use bells, which I find really effective too, differently than sage. Um, manifesting spells, how to charge objects using crystals. I mean, it's really fairly basic stuff. However, it's also really got beautiful, well, like here, healthy boundaries bath, but it's got really beautiful photography. Oops. And I really enjoyed reading about this stuff. I like reading about books anyways, books about, reading about books. Well, that's true. God, Laura. But reading about houses. Um, so if there's like books on decorating, I like to read those, flip through them. If there are books on energy and clearing spaces. I like to read those not just for work as a massage therapist because I do clear my room after every person coming in. Um, I like to do different things during the massage energetically speaking to help people out. They don't always know I'm doing them. It's not some crazy crazy thing either. It's more like bringing them calm and peace or asking for clarity or something. But I really found this helpful and inspirational and just the right tone and it doesn't talk down to anybody at all. It uses a lot of basic stuff, but I really, really enjoyed House Magic. And I would love to go to her shop in Salem, Massachusetts. And my last favorite book for the year is Year of Wonder by Clemency Burton Hill. This, um, for every day of the year, this has a classical piece of music. And I think it roughly starts as far back in the past as possible and then moves up as you progress throughout the year. She has little essays. Some are just a paragraph, some are a whole page long, explaining why it's there or something about the composer, something about the most famous recording that's done of it. Um, but it was really, really interesting. I am a lifelong classical music fan. I am also a former classical musician. I played the viola for 13 years and I would like to get back into it. My viola, the one I have now physically, I cannot stand the way that it sounds. It's terrible. So I'm starting to look into replacing it and maybe finding a like mm, community orchestra or something to begin again and get back into it because I really do miss performing. But a lot of the stuff in here I've played before and it's really nice to go back and refresh yourself and listen to new things and learn about all the different kinds. And it's, there's so much artistry and there's so much hard work in classical music but it's also so accessible and there is such enormous variety that there is something for everybody in it. So I will be dipping in and out of this the next few years of my life, certainly. I really recommend it. If you're looking for a place to start with classical music that is more up to date, there are lots of, you know, top 100 records to listen to before you die and operas and all this stuff. And those are all great resources too, but this was published, I think last year or the year before, and it covers so much of all of the different kinds of um, classical music, that it's really, really great. So I recommend that very highly. Drop my notebook. Um, I wanted to go over my goals for 2020 once again. I th I'm still milling over a number I'm shooting for. I'm may Maybe I'll go for 150 books this year. I'm not positive. I might just do 100 and see what happens. But um, my goals are to DNF more freely and not feel bad about it. To read my own books, specifically the ones that are up here in the living room. Um, and try and get some of those cleared. Um, I'll be doing booktube prize judging. That'll be a different challenge for me. And I'll also be reading more from my classics book group that meets in real life here. Um, I also like to read more currently. That will be addressing my backlog of book of the month books 
and with book two prize too that will help me read a little bit more currently um don't buy into bookish hype which i get sucked into all the time i'm sure you guys do too but i really don't want to buy into something i tend to not like um not like and not enjoy new fiction like i just i've never read sally rooney but i am fairly certain i would not like her like that kind of stuff so i but i sometimes i think i should buy the books then instead but i mm, I should really trust my gut and not just buy something because everyone's talking about it. Wait a while, see what happens, and then do it. Um, <laughs> this one, stopping a library slut. I put this in because I tr I go in like spurts of using the library, and I love my library system. It's really fantastic. There are I think thirty five libraries that pull from we can pull from in my county, so there's a lot to choose from. It's really wonderful. I really feel lucky to have such a great library system. But I tend to go there and I'll request, oh, I'll just get one or two. And then I'll start thinking, oh, I can re request this one too. And oh, they have a copy at my home library. I can just get that. So when I go in and pick them up, I can just get those four right away. The next thing I know, I have 15 or 20 books checked out. Stop that, Laura. Stop the insanity. Susan Powder, stop the insanity. Um, you know, if I'm getting one or two or if I'm getting something for the book prize, fine. But don't just go and check out books to check out books because they happen to be there. Like, you have to read these first. And my last one is I want to track um, track my DNF pages. Cousin at Always Doing talked about this. I'm really curious to see, now that I will be DNFing more freely, exactly how many pages I actually read that don't count towards anything. So that'll be interesting. So those are my reading goals. What's coming up for me in January? I'm just going to mention three of them. Uh, the first one is This Chunkster London by Edward Rutherford. I'm going to be doing a very slow year-long buddy read with my friend Danny at Spinelli Speaks. You should go check her out. She has a great channel. She's so nice. Um, she's getting married this year too. So we just decided yesterday that we were going to do this together. Um, it This little mass market copy that I got for a Christmas present in 2014 has um, 1,124 pages. So it's going to take a long time and it's mass market. I mean, it's small print. The nice thing is the spine is really bendable so I can, I don't have to break the spine, which makes me itchy, um, quite frankly. So this is just a history of London. So I, this should be really interesting. And again, we're taking it slow, but I'd like to at least get a little bit started here to get a feel for it. Um, then I have Curtain by Agatha Christie. This is the last in the Hercule Perot series. I've been putting off reading this because this series and Agatha Christie means a lot to my family and um, my dad especially loved watching the TV show. So every time I hear the theme song or think about this, it reminds me of him. It makes me a little bit sad. Good sad, but you know. Um, so in this one, Hercule Perot dies. This is not a spoiler. Um, and I think Hastings is back and George is back. I'm not sure, but I have to read this for my classics book group, which if we meet will be tomorrow. Today is the first, it's one in the afternoon, I think. So I have just over 24 hours to read this book. I can do it if I stop watching YouTube, but that seems unlikely at this point. And then the next on my um, to be, to be for this month is a reread, which is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Isn't this an awesome cover? I had to buy it, it's terrible, but I had to buy it. So I was reading this at midnight last night. It was a really nice way to bring in the year. Um, but I want to reread books too, because I haven't read this since high school when I read it the first time. And I still count it as one of my favorite books. So I would like to reread it. Not only because I love it, I think I will still love it. And I have this beautiful new copy. But also because I have two kind of sequels to Rebecca that are chunksters that are on my living room shelves. And I'd like to get to them too. So the first one is Mrs. De Winter by Susan Hill. Um, let's see. I think this is set 12 years after Rebecca ends. So this, come home to England. Ba, ba, ba. Since Manderley burned, tormented Maxim De Winter and his demure second wife have fled the ghosts of a dark unspoken yesterday. And now they have come home to England to bury what was and to start anew. But the sensual warmth of a golden autumn cannot mask the chill of a lingering evil, for October's gentle breeze whispers that Rebecca, beautiful, mysterious, malevolent Rebecca, is haunting their lives once more. Hmm. So that should be good. And then the other one I have 
is Rebecca's Tale by Sally Bowman, another chunkster. This is set um, in April 1951. It is 20 years since the death of Rebecca, the hauntingly beautiful first wife of Maxim de Winter. 20 years since Manderley, the de Winter's family estate, was destroyed by fire, but Rebecca's tale is just beginning. Colonel Julian, an old family friend, receives an anonymous package concerning Rebecca. An inquisitive young scholar named Terence Gray appears and stirs up the quiet seaside hamlet with disturbing questions about the past and with the close ties he soon forges with the colonel and his eligible daughter, Ellie. Amid bitter gossip and murky intrigue, the trio begins a search for the real Rebecca and the truth behind her mysterious death. So I'm going to hopefully get to these two this year. They're on my very short list. They are both between four and 500 pages. So this would be a nice chunk off of my shelves, but they should be good too. So I keep thinking I'm going to make shorter videos. And then this one again, 21 minutes, Laura. Oh my God. Stop talking. So I hope you had a nice New Year's Eve. I was watching Bob's Burgers and reading Rebecca until midnight. And then I went to bed shortly afterwards. Real rock star night here. Um, and I hope that um, you had an equally exciting New Year's Eve. Hope that you are off to a good start for the New Year so far. And I will talk to you guys all soon. Thanks so much. Bye.